And welcome to the One Shot Podcast. Uh, this is the, uh, I guess technically the second, but it's the first episode of our series on preparedness. Um, and you know, today uh, we're we've brought in uh, Matt and Tana Wolf from PFX Storm Shelters. And so you're kind of like, all right, Storm Shelters, like, what is the chance? Well, we live here. Uh, if if you're in the DFW area, Texas, Oklahoma kind of that tornado alley, you understand that we have very, very serious storms. I moved from California and, you know, everyone is terrified of earthquakes that doesn't live in California. Yeah. In California, it's no big deal. Yeah. It is nothing like, Dude, I remember, oh. I remember taking a trip in high school to California and we were there like three days and I was scared to death that we were going to be in a Bro, in It's earthquake. nothing. It shakes a little <laughs> bit, right? It's like, it's, sh- it's no big deal. But we're terrified of tornadoes because mm-hmm. you see, you know, grow up, see the movie Twister and you're like, oh my gosh, the devastation. Then you see, you know, these, these huge events. And when it makes national news, it's devastating, yeah. absolutely devastating. Um, you know, earthquakes, they're happening more and more frequent. And so it's scary. Uh, but when you just kind of live with it and my dad, so background on earthquakes and this is totally a rabbit hole, um, is, in the uh 88 san francisco earthquake which was bad yes my dad worked in san francisco and he was on the 11th story of at&t or pacific bell at the time Jeez. Uh, of the building and this was when the bridge collapsed i mean it was it was scary scary uh, so in those events yes like mass mass casualties mass damage um, but in north texas Tornadoes are just so frequent and they're so sporadic and they're so unpredictable. You just, you have no idea. Uh, And so my wife and I, since we've been here, we just weren't real prepared for it. We had a room that we designated. Then as our family grew, like it was harder and harder to get our entire family into like a small bathroom Mm -hmm. in the center of the house. Right. And so we, uh, we did a lot of research for probably six months or so figuring out, okay, what kind of solutions can we do? Uh, We have an existing home, so it's not like we're building new, and then you can pour this concrete, you know, bunker. uh, And we're trying to figure it out and went through a ton of different options and ultimately landed on these modular shelters that PFX storm shelters do. They're out of uh, Gainesville, Texas, which is, you know, almost to Oklahoma. Um, And we, we landed on that for a number of reasons. One, for, you know, just actual uh, the ability to maximize the space that we had to 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 put this in. Uh, two was economics. It it really just made the most sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then three quality. And then just working with them and all that. But the biggest thing is, and I, and I hope you take this from the episode. The biggest thing is as a husband and a father, the ability to provide a space for my family that is safe. Mm-hmm. That worst case scenario, if our home is hit by a tornado, which, again, the odds are small, but they're higher than anywhere High else enough, in the country. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the state of Texas has more tornadoes touched down annually than anywhere else in the world. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's something that you have to think about. And, and so now we've had a, a couple months and just the peace that it's given us. We've already had to get into it twice because the storms that came through. Uh, luckily, obviously, nothing happened to our house. But, I mean, we lost shingles and we lost mm-hmm. um, uh, some stuff on our roof. But, like, it's such a peace of mind. And it also, uh, because firearms are something for me that is important to have. And I, 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 there's a hobby side of it. But there's also just kind of the preparedness, too, and having that and never knowing what the future holds and and it also acts as a safe room yeah so keep firearms safe away from kids um it's got like a safe door on it so anyways i really hope you enjoy today uh there's a lot of information learn a little bit about their story and their family it's a family-run business um just a really really cool story and and again the product that they have is just unbelievable so yeah. hope you guys enjoy matt and tonal wolf from pfx storm yeah, shelters you, you talked about it last week but you know, you and I, when we get, we're out of town, I guess by the time this episode airs, we're out of town last week, but 
you know, leaving your family behind, there's no stress now. Yeah. As far as that goes, uh -huh. you know that they're going to be safe uh -huh. uh, if a storm hits. You know they're going to be safe if something. As long as my wife can remember the code to get in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the unlikely event you have an intruder, you know that yeah. they're going to be safe. And yeah. so that's part of being a good leader of your yeah. family yeah. is by when you're removed from the situation, are they still going to be uh -huh. okay? Are they still going to be prepared? Yeah. And, and it, so that's an awesome step. That and it's taken. cool. It's been kind of a catalyst. It's okay. Now I've got, I've got water in there. I've got some like non-perishable foods. It really has become kind of that, like, look, if it hits the fan, like we've, we bought ourselves some time yeah. and some security. So That's awesome. it's, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I'm awesome. excited for this episode. I didn't, I didn't get to be there, uh, the day that, that it was recorded. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited to hear this one as well. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy it yeah. also, but again, our first true episode on the, our preparedness series. Yeah. Um, especially for you Texans. I think this one's going to be very yeah, valuable. Very so, much so. I yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, share it. Again, all, this series, if nothing, if you never shared an episode before, these, these, this series yeah. you need to share because the more people that we can make aware, the better. So uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoy it. We will see you next week. Well, welcome to the One Shot Podcast. If you are watching on uh, YouTube or Ben for some reason posted this on Instagram, which I know he won't, you'll notice he is absent today. Uh, we've got a big celebration and announcement that we will share with y'all soon, but he is not able to be here for good reason. I promise he didn't just flake out like Darren always does. Uh, but today's episode, uh, running solo, so be kind in the comments. We're, uh, we've got a really important episode to talk about uh, surrounding protection, uh, family and protection. And we're gonna, you're going to hear uh, this couple's story and, and um, the, the difference that they're making you know, one family at a time. Um, it's a really unique business, really cool story, really excited for you. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce everyone to Matt and Tana Wolf at PFX Storm Shelters. Uh, they're based out of Gainesville, Texas. Uh, so if you are listening in really kind of Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Texas is really yes. kind of where you focus. North Texas, Oklahoma. Yeah. Pay attention to this episode because, um, and I'll, and I'll give my testimony on, on their product and what they do and the impact that it's made on our family. But this is, this is really important, especially living where we live and the season that we're coming into. So welcome. Thank you all for coming. Thank well, you thank for you. having us. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having us on. Yeah, well, appreciate you all taking the drive. That's probably, what, hour, hour and a half? Yeah. Something yeah, like that. a little bit like well, that. Appreciate you. Really do. Let's uh, let's give some insight in, into you all. Um, you all are married. How long have you all been married? Oh, no. Did you answer that one? <laughs> oh, it's a trap. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, 17 years. 17 years. And you all have six children. Six children. Yeah. And uh, three, well, the ages range from about four to 22. Ooh, there's a gap. Yes, sir. We have one fixing to graduate college and one fixing to start school. Starting kindergarten. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, we were talking a little bit before the show. You're from Ohio originally. Let's take us back a little bit to the history, how y'all met, how you connected, and what brought y'all to Texas. So um, I'm from Ohio. She's from Texas. And I spent five years in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And we did a couple of deployments and on those deployments that we would do out of San Diego on the way back from Hawaii, which was our last port going back to San Diego, uh, the Navy and Marine Corps would allow you to do something called a Tiger Cruise. So civilians could come on the ship and ride the ship back from Hawaii to San Diego. Ah. And yes, so that's, that's what I did. My best friend um, all through, I mean, basically since sixth grade up, uh, she was also in the Marine Corps, and she was stationed on the same ship as, as Matt. So I flew out to Hawaii to meet her and ride on the, the aircraft carrier back, and that's where Matt and I met. So same, same. I'm assuming lobster dinners, steak dinners, <laughs> a bunch of, you know, disco on the, on the ship, right? Same as a normal cruise ship, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think maybe we played bingo one night. Um, and then we sat in the back of helicopters and watched movies like out in the, wherever they would store the helicopters. So Matt could probably talk about that a little bit more, but yeah, that's, there wasn't a whole lot to do in that, <sighs> you know, four or five days that it took us to get from Hawaii back to San Diego. I didn't know that was a thing. That's 
that's awesome. I mean, that's an experience. Like, oh, you, yeah, sure. if nothing else, you have a story. Yes. Because of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and I didn't know it was a thing until I was out on the ship the second time. <laughs> like, who are you people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely not in fatigue. They definitely aren't our yes. people. That's yeah. awesome, though. Okay, so so y'all met, and then you went back to San Diego. You went back to Texas, yeah. and then just stayed connected. Good. Yeah, she actually dated my friend first. You're um, not supposed to bring that part of the story up. <laughs> hey, uh, that's a part of I feel like almost everybody's story is like there was some connection before and you but were that's the, how we met was okay. back then. And then um, she had come out a few more times to San Diego. I still probably had about six months left after my second tour. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of started talking and then started dating long distance. Mm-hmm. And uh, once I got out, I went back to Ohio just for a short amount of time and I was so used to traveling, not really been tied back to my hometown that it wasn't too long after that. I moved back to Texas and mm-hmm. we've been down here together ever since. And you're from like the far North Texas area. Where are you from originally? I'm from Azel. Okay. So out near Weatherford, yep. um, Lake Worth area, mm-hmm. that direction. So that's where I grew up and graduated high school. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where Haley graduated high school Mm -hmm. and then um we thought the rest of the kids would as well but you know life is funny that way and throws some changes at you and so we ended up moving and trying to find a a house and a location so we could take three additional um kids in and so that's kind of what happened and that's how we kind of moved up to Gainesville that's happened to where happened to be where we Mm -hmm. found um a house at that would kind of accommodate all of us okay so 2020 brought a lot of people really looking to to get out of the city. What year did y'all f- go up to Gain- Gainesville? Uh, right at the end of 2019. Okay. We, yeah. we moved okay. up in November of 2019. Yeah. So y'all were like us. Yeah. So we kind of did the same thing, went out and got a little bit more space, mm-hmm. um, get out of the city a little bit. Um, so you, you're you going to take on three more kids. So you go from three to six. I mean, that's – People give us a hard time because we've got twins and we went two to four and they're like, I don't know how you do it. And then there's y'all story, three to six, you double it. Um, so you, you decided, look, we want to go find some space. What was the reasoning to like get out of the city, to go north, to maybe find a slower pace um, for your family? Initially, we were kind of looking for a home that could one accommodate all of us, but also some land that we had the ability to build a new facility for our business. Mm -hmm. And if down the road we wanted to separate one from the other, we still were on a big enough piece of property that it wouldn't really impact it. Mm -hmm. And we seen at the time where we were living at just outside of Azel, it was growing quite a bit. And um, we liked living in a rural area. We liked the small town morals, the small town ethics, just the way the teachers are with the kids and, so we started kind of looking. We raced a lot in Denton, and we started looking at like a 30-mile radius from there. You say race a lot. You kind of just breezed over that. <laughs> we uh, we raced go-karts. Okay. Uh, me and the boys and nice. raced go-karts. And uh, we were getting pretty heavily into it at the same time as well, building the business up and mm-hmm. racing. And so we wanted to try to be somewhere closer to the track, but also kind of in a smaller area. And so we were looking around – Whitesboro area Mm -hmm. and then uh we found a house out there and we found a house in Gainesville just outside of Gainesville and um we ended up going with the house outside of Gainesville I think she fell in love with it right off the bat it took me a little coercing to get into it but uh, we ended up moving out there that's awesome um so you mentioned starting the business um and I want to come back to the family stuff here in a little bit but PFX storm shelters um what what got you into that in the first place? What what started that that idea? Was that right when you moved to Texas? I mean, how did you how did you get into it? No, we uh we were doing a lot of fab work. Mm-hmm. So I was working full time, and then we were moonlighting fab work, mm-hmm. and we had been for oh gosh ten ten years or so, pretty much working two full time jobs: mm-hmm. the moonlighting on the side, and then working full time in oil and gas. And one of uh, our neighbors that we knew, um, he got into storm shelters and asked if we could fabricate shelters for him. Um, He had a construction business. And so we started doing that. And then we were building for some home builders as well. And 
I don't know, we were doing it probably for a year or so, and we kind of thought, you know, we're, we take a lot of pride in what we do, mm-hmm. and we like helping people. And we were seeing what we were building at the time, what we were being asked to build, and we thought we could do a better job and try to help people out better mm-hmm. and still be able to be competitive and make a living off of it. Yeah. And so we started back in 2013 is when we started designing our own. And then full time right at the beginning of 2015, mm. and uh, we love it. We love it. It's it's been great. We get to meet a lot of people. Um, we have all kinds of customers. Some that are really ecstatic about them. Some that are just like, well, yeah, I have protection now. You know, it's but it's just it's really nice, especially when we can go help a customer. You can see the concern with them how scared they are of storms or tornadoes or whatever else and then we can help provide that level of safety for them we had one customer early on i remember her still um her name was Rhonda. that she would go to the local walmart every time a storm would come because of walmart had storm shelters built into it Mm -hmm. that you know she knows a storm is coming this evening two hours before that storm hits she's sitting there hanging out in walmart until the storm passes through wow and she was so ecstatic once we got the shelter built in her house. Wow. You know what's funny, sorry, is the last major storm that came through, uh, gosh, maybe three weeks, a month ago, <laughs> came through. Um, a good friend of ours, who they just moved from California, you know, and us Californians, we don't know how to handle storms, right? Um, she was at a Walmart, and Walmart wouldn't let her in. Really? Yeah. And I And I don't want to put... I don't want to put Walmart on blast, but I will put the Walmart and Anna on blast. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I don't understand that. Like if you have that built in, she was literally there and they would not let, would not let her in as the storm was coming through. It was like minutes before she had to sit in her car during the, in the middle of the storm. So anyways, we gave him your contact yeah. info. Huh. Crazy. Yeah, Thank no, you. that is crazy. We had right before that storm, we had a customer or not a customer, hopefully a potential customer. They called us up. Um, they were out on Lake Texoma and have never been in this area before, never been in Texas. And they were asking us about public storm shelters. They were uh-huh. blown away that there's not public storm shelters because they're from, I think, Missouri. And I guess around in some of those states, there's yeah. public storm shelters that people can go to. Um, and I mean, considering Texas is a state that has more uh, more tornadoes touchdown than any other state. Granted, we have a lot of size, but like almost double what the next state is. That's how many tornadoes touch down in Texas. That is surprising that there's not more. That's interesting. Okay. So, so yes, like you got introduced to it. Let's tell everybody what PFX storm shelters is because I did a ton of research on, okay, what can I do? I I wanted something inside of our house that my family could go into because typically my family, my wife specifically kind of freaks out when storms are coming through, I'm the one that I want to stand on the front porch. And I want to watch, watch it, come, it in. come in. And she is like 30 minutes before in the pantry. Kids have bike helmets on, they have pillows <laughs> everywhere. And I'm, I'm like looking at her and I'm like, okay, but we have glass vases like up above, but you, Where you're it just did, didn't yeah. make any sense. So we had gone through a remodel and created some space for a shelter. And I'd done a ton of research. I'd looked at like the cinder block model, um, like where you just build up uh, cinder blocks filled mm-hmm. with concrete. I looked at just a, a solid steel, like if you were to bring in, you know, three quarter inch sheet metal, uh, like steel sheet metal, mm-hmm. doing something like that. I looked, I looked at a bunch of different, and then a buddy of mine had used y'all and sent it to me. He goes, dude, the greatest thing about them is, is you can put it anywhere. It's flexible um, and it's strong. And so started doing some research, reached out to y'all. Um, y'all came out and you guys were amazing. Like the entire process was amazing. But talk through why your shelters are different than say just, hey, I want to put pour a concrete shelter. Or I want to do an underground shelter mm-hmm. or something like that. One of the things like I learned early on when we were doing shelters for the other companies and home builders and stuff is a lot of the ones we were doing were just the big welded together structure. Mm-hmm. And when we were designing ours, I wanted to be able to go into whether it's a new construction home or an existing home and be able to install it without having to do a lot of demo work, Mm -hmm. but also at the same time being able to somewhat mass produce the shelter because anytime you do something in production, it helps keep costs down Yep. so that we could 
use this, utilize the same components, but be able to alter the shelter in different sizes without having to custom tailor every single shelter. And after I don't know, probably about a year, year and a half of just constant design work and trying to figure out, it's, it's so funny, like, oh, well, all these bolt holes need to match up. Oh, no, now we got to change this over here to make this match up so this will work. And after running through all that, we built our first one. Um, so we came up with a modular shelter yeah. that uses 6 and 12-inch panels. And ironically, most homes, when the architects are designing a home, the walls typically fall somewhere around on 6 or 12-inch centers. Yep. So we can go into – pretty much any existing room and we hand carry the parts in and we can build a shelter in place right there mm -hmm. and have very little wasted space afterwards. Um, whether it's if we're outfitting an entire room or we're coming into like a master closet and mm -hmm. putting a shelter in that. Um, I remember him <clears throat> cause he was welding out the, you know, the fully enclosed ones. And he kept telling me, he was like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. There's gotta be an easier way. There's gotta be, and I just, you know, let him think all this little yeah. thing, you know, the things that he was going to think and he kept, but he, he never gave up and he kept, um, he like going back to it. And then he would want to talk to me about the corner, you know, how is the corner going to work? Cause it has to do this. It can't do this. And so I just kept, you know, going with it. And then he was like, I think I've got it. I'm like, you've got what? And he's like the perfect shelter. Like I've got it. How, it, so we weren't the first that came up with the panelized design by any means, but there wasn't many out there. Um, and so it was, it was really neat from my end of the spectrum to watch it. Like, I mean, all the way from, you know, his first thoughts to fruition of the, mm -hmm. of the first um, shelter and taking it up and getting it tested at, at Texas tech. Um, so it's pretty neat just to see the whole process and know that, um, it is our design. He says ours all the time to include me, but it is all his. Design. It's y'all's. <laughs> it's hundred percent. I'm the same. Yeah. If I, if I talk about like my football story, it's, I, we played here, we did this because y'all play so much of an impact on the overall success of that. Like without y'all hundred percent, it's, it's we, yeah, it's, yeah. We, I mean, sure. if, if she wasn't there, the kids would be out there running around in the shop, like <laughs> yep. wild animals. And, yep. Mm -hmm. you know, so, there's so many it's, times it's neat. And it's, it's, great to be a part of something that it is ours. It is, you know, our design um, from the very beginning to even now, um, you know, going and installing shelters and, and all of that. It's It's been a crazy process. Mm. So I, I love that. And I, I want to learn a little bit more about that testing, right? And you said you went to Texas Tech. Talk through that process because to be FEMA rated, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a process. It's not like, hey, I can just throw together some steel some steel panels and, and call it a day and sell it as this. So yeah. walk through like the, the structural stability of these um, and, and the lengths that you had to go through to get it there. So um, Texas Tech works and has, I think it's been like since the 70s, a lot with FEMA mm -hmm. and trying to design codes and come up with codes to give some design criteria toward, towards tornado shelters. They have a lot of experience there in studying storms and studying tornadoes and what the impacts are like and everything. So in conjunction with Texas Tech, FEMA has a couple different standards for tornado shelters. Mm -hmm. And then now along with FEMA, ICC, which is the International Code Council, that's what all cities follow when it comes okay. to building criteria for buildings. Um, they also require or have specific requirements for tornado shelters too. Mm -hmm. So when we were building them, um, we wanted to be able to convey to our customers, this isn't just something that I'm saying that is good. This is a proven rating here. And so we had to follow a lot of guidelines on how they have to be anchored down, how much ventilation has to be in the shelter, um, <clears throat> what kind of wind loads that the shelter can take. And then kind of the final step was taking it up to tech and they take it, strap this thing onto these big giant angle plates and more or less shoot two by fours out of a simulated F5 tornado. Yeah. And <clears throat> we've seen some of the videos before we ever went up there. And me and her, we went up there personally uh -huh. and stood probably 15 feet from the shelter as they're shooting it. It was and a little too close. Yeah. It yeah. was, uh, <laughs> we were kind of blown away because, um, you know, the videos just don't do justice to what they're actually doing in person. And when we were watching it and the, watching the two by fours impact the shelters, it's, 
it's pretty awesome to see, but it's also kind of, it opens your eyes and kind of surreal, you know, if you're actually in, in a tornado and most people don't realize that the, uh, the dangerous parts of the storm are typically the debris. It's not the wind picking you up and blowing you two blocks away. It's actually the debris that ends up causing injuries or deaths during tornadoes. And, uh, seeing that and really seeing what that could do was pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I mean, yeah, I've not ever, I still have to this day, not seen a tornado in person. Um, but I, the, the F five that came through like mesquite, um, Rowlett in 2015, Mm. we went the day after to go kind of help people out, serve some food and stuff. And honestly, I've never seen something so devastating, like so powerful in the impacts. And I mean, literally foundations, the only thing attached to foundations were the toilets on most of them. Like that was the only thing that was left. Um, So uh, what you're saying, like to see a two by four shot at what, 200 and something miles an hour. I mean, that's, it, it really does put in perspective how dangerous it is. And like, you you think inside your house is totally safe like right that's that's your safe place and you always think that um but i mean mother nature and tornadoes it's kind of like hey hold my beer let me see how safe you feel (laughs) in this and it's it's absolutely insane and i'll say this so uh y'all installed ours gosh it's been probably six weeks now if something like that yeah something about that and uh, the reason i say that and realize it and say it with hesitation is because i've I need to finish out the outside and it's just taking me some time. (laughs) Um, but we've used it twice since. And, um, and first time it was, um, it was our family. And then we had my wife's sister and her kids there. And then it was my wife cause they live in a, um, they do the RV living. So when the storms came through, they're like, yeah, we need to go somewhere. And then her parents came the other time. So, and we have a, uh, oh gosh, what is it? An eight by eight by five, I think is what mine yes, was so. eight by five shelter. And yeah, so we had six, four, two. So yeah, I mean, we had 12 people in our shelter. Um, and honestly, just the, just the calmness that you have being inside of it, knowing it and, you know, doing the research and understanding, okay, what it can stand, withstand and seeing the videos and, it, there was a a first time I ever like when we were like hiding during a storm is I've ever looked at my wife and like she totally was relaxed. See, now it was like fun, right? And the kids think it's fun because right. like we're safe in here. And so I just I love that y'all have pursued an industry that really does help and protect people. Um, and the other thing, too, is is if I if I'm traveling for work, you also offer some solutions that it potentially could double as a safe room as well. I mean, I guess they always could be a safe room because there's a locking mechanism from the inside. So you can't get, but you have like an electronic keypad, like a safe door. So I have built mine out now also as a gun room so that my guns are secured and safe away from kids, away from neighbors when they have friends over. So it's safe there, but it's also a storm shelter. Talk through maybe versatility that you've seen some of your customers use. That's one of the biggest ones is, you know, we're in the great state of Texas where hunting is king and guns are king. And a lot of people like to shoot, like to hunt. And it, some of the safes out there, it, it gets pretty costly to be able to store a large amount of guns. Yep. But also having a place to even put a gun safe. Whereas if you already have one of these shelters in place, you can dual purpose it and yep. use it to be able to store any kind of weapons, any kind of valuables or anything mm-hmm. else that you want into it. Um, so that it's not just, uh, you know, unutilized space, yeah. except for during a storm. Right. Um, and it was something that kind of in the beginning, when we first designed them, <clears throat> we designed it with the only way to lock it was from the inside. And that was just for a storm. And then we had a lot of interest in wanting to make the door lockable to dual purpose it. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we kind of came up with a gun safe idea. Instead of just putting, you know, a typical deadbolt lock on the door, which a lot of our um, competitors do that. We wanted something to where when it is locked, it is locked just like it is when you're going through a storm because that's just as robust as a gun safe. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you have the tools to break into a safe or to break into one of our shelters, you can get to a safe too. They're yeah. very, very 
unpenetrable. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where we're at right now is just looking at that and looking at other options where we have gun racks and stuff to put inside and mm -hmm. kind of coming up with different accessories too of what we can outfit them on the inside with to make them more versatile to yeah. different customers. Yeah, because, uh, again, hopefully, it, you know, if, if you live in the south, right, that's impacted by weather like this, Midwest that's impacted, hopefully, you know, you use it once or twice a year, right? And hopefully you never really have to use it, right? But but having it is one of those things that I, I couldn't put a price tag on what I was describing earlier, like the calm that it yeah. brought. Um, but, you know, let's now talk through kind of just business strategy. Like this is a family business for y'all, husband and wife running a business. I mean, your kids help out. Like talk about the importance of including your family in this process and showing them what it's like you know, the good, the bad, the ugly of yeah. running your own business. I just saw a Facebook memory pop up a few days ago from quite a few years ago. And it was because um, it's for the most part always been Matt and I that go and do the installs of the of the shelters. And sometimes it's it would be two a day. Um, and so we'd be gone like from the morning until the evening. And luckily, Haley at that time was old enough that she took care of of the boys like she would get them on the bus in the morning and she would get them off the bus and she would make sure they had and so I was thanking her and I was thankful that I had children that were you know responsible enough that I could leave or we could leave at home um so I mean so from the very beginning even if they weren't out in the shop they mm -hmm. always played a role because a lot of times Matt and I weren't there yeah. but as they have gotten older um Ethan, he's our oldest son. He kind of replaced me in the in the installation process, which I'm thankful for. So, <laughs> uh, but also kind of going back to the the family dynamic when we we added the little kids to our family, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't really possible for me to be gone as yeah. much as I used to be. So it was helpful that uh, Ethan was, and then Caden has gone. Um, they get out in the shop. They both welded, you know, weld on the panels, weld the doors, all of those things. They go on the installs. Um, and it's, I don't know, from my point of view, not just because he took over my, my installation job, but it just, it gives them so much life experience and shop experience. And they know how to do things that, you know, a lot of kids their age have no experience in doing. And it's going to be skills that they can use, you know, for the rest of their lives. Um, also sacrifice you know with us not being there some they have to take care of the kids and things like that so it's from all aspects it's it can only be good yeah were you surprised at how much they could take on and handle In, initially no it wasn't until <laughs> i'd look back at it and yeah. see what yeah. we were yeah. making them go through i mean yeah. there was when we first moved to gainesville our shop that we have now because we our business is at our home and mm -hmm. we built our business there um we started dirt work the day we closed on the property with the intent to have that shop built in about two months so we planned about a two to three month time frame of where the business was going to be shut down but when we left weatherford we had a huge backlog and the shop was getting delayed and getting delayed because of rain mm -hmm. so ethan i mean at 16 years old was working in the shop we there was a couple of weeks we we put in 120 hours each a week working in the shop and looking back on that i it, i never really registered to me at the time watching him because he just do it was it. out of necessity I mean, yes yeah. and, they, and they would just do it and it was something now in hindsight looking back it's a very good character trait that we've seen yeah. that unintentionally has been built into them of really opening up our business and showing them all aspects of it, showing them the hard work too, but they know all the financials of the business. They know when we're doing well, they know when we're not, and they know why. Mm -hmm. And it really shows them um, a lot of stuff with it. We had this conversation heading to a race not too long ago, me and Ethan, and we were, I can't remember what it was, but we were talking about something business related and he was talking about another business and asking him, I don't just, I don't get why they just wouldn't do this. And he said, you have a lot more experience than a lot of people actual kids business age. owners yeah. Uh, yeah but even some <clears throat> business owners because they've they've lived it yes they have and yeah. even Caden he's he's 15 now um 
but at that time he was like 12 and 13 but he did all the same things like they race together they I mean him and Ethan spend so much time together mm-hmm. Matt and I it it took um like some major life changes that we realized we were treating our like 12 and 13 year old the exact same that we were treating and expecting of him the same stuff that we were expecting you know of like the 16 you know 15 16 year old and yeah. so it was hard it was hard for us because then we were like okay we we're not even letting him be a kid you yeah. know like there were things that yes it was all all good for the most part but we did um we did step back and i think yeah. Luckily, I think, thankfully, we were able to step back and see that so that we didn't just keep pushing him, um, you know, because they do need to be kids. Yeah. And so that's that wisdom. That is important. That is wisdom right there. I, I catch myself all the time. My oldest, she's so mature and so she's like, she's awesome. And I, I catch myself holding her to a standard that is unfair to her. Like, <laughs> I forget sometimes yes. that she's 11 years old. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, and I, and, and it, it tears me up, but then, you know, my nine year old, there's times I'm like, all right, bro, you're, you're nine. You need to at least act nine, right? Like no more, you know? Right. So it's, it's funny, but it takes wisdom. I, I just, I love though that you're exposing your kids to all aspects of it, right? The financial mm-hmm. side of it, the, the labor side, because like you said, kids, and this is one thing we, Ben and I talk about on the show all the time is is kids are so unprepared for life nowadays. They're not exposed to adversity. They're not exposed to struggle. They're not exposed really to their own successes based off of their hard work. Everything's just kind of laid out and it's easy. And then they get to real life and it's like, what? Like, what have you done for 22 years? Yeah. So I I love that y'all are doing that. And I just, I wish, I hope that more parents with, young kids that feel like they need to shelter and protect their kids from everything will listen and, and think about bringing them into it a little bit more, bring them into the struggle. I was, um, it's funny. I was, we were, my wife and I were at a, a conference a few weeks back and it's one of the most amazing experiences that we have every year. And we've done it for 13 years now, but there was a, there was a parenting se- uh, session that we went to and they were talking about conflict and, you know, as parents, how do you handle conflict? And for the very first time, I was like, I'm not sure I agree with this. And the speakers, who I respect a ton, said, you know, uh, we never fought in front of our kids. We always did it in private. We always did it away from them. Um, and and my parents, for the most part, did that as well. But one thing I think that's important is seeing having kids see that their conflict is a real thing, disagreements are a real thing, but also seeing the parents work through that conflict, finding a sure. resolution whether it's through humility, whether it's through um, apology, whether it's through whatever it is, right, is is working through that. And I think exposing kids to business and the struggles is like, okay, I see that there's hard things out there and don't give up. Like you can right. continue to push through and, and, and you can come out the other side stronger and better. And I mean, yeah. I'm sure you guys have learned that through the business over and over about like, never getting through this. I don't know how we're going to survive. <laughs> and then you're on it. You're like, I'm glad we went through that because now we're better as a business, as a, as a couple, as a family, because of those things that we went through. Oh yeah. yeah. It, it definitely does. It's uh, something right now that we're working through. Um, one of our friends at church that uh, we've hired to basically be kind of like an outsourced COO to help us realign the business and work through some different um, projects and stuff to figure out where we want to be 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. Same sense there, you know, we've been doing this for eight plus years now and we're kind of realizing that unless we have some extreme focus and have everything laid out of where we want to be, we're kind of just running in the wind yeah. and it's, it's, uh, really shown us and shown the kids the same thing is, you know, you gotta have goals and you gotta know where you're going with those yeah. goals and, it's another stage in life with the business that we're, we're running through. Um, same with, you know, when we go to church and with, uh, some of the stuff I'm learning too, mm. of leading and how to lead. And a lot of it, like you're talking about the kids being exposed to things, a lot of stuff we see is weakness. Mm. You know, you don't want to see, you don't want your kids to see you apologizing to your wife. Cause you just snapped at her. Mm-hmm. Cause we view that as, 
kind of weakness on yep. the men's side, but at the same time, showing that humility actually makes them be yeah. better kids as they grow up. Yeah. Seeing what we really need to do. Totally agree. And and to your point on, on bringing in a CEO, y'all are just, I'm sure, so busy and there's so much to do. It's hard to, I'm sure, lay out that plan and and create the plan so that it frees you up to say, okay, hey, does this align with our 10-year goal? Does this align? If And I'm, I'm guilty of that. I'm just a grinder. Like, I really do grind. Like, I, I love, like, visioning sessions and talking through ideas. That's, that's great. But for me, my, my struggle is implementing a plan. And in the last 18 months or so, um, just through some mentors and coaches, it's like, you've got to have, you've got to say, okay, where am I going to be in five years? And what's the path that I need to take? And you need to learn to say no to the things that deter you <laughs> yeah. from getting to there. No, and that's, that's exactly, um, Matt doesn't, he's not super great yet about saying no. Same, so, same. and, um, so it seems like a lot of times we're just treading water, treading water. And then it's like, this idea sounds great. Now let's do this idea. Now let's mm -hmm. do this idea. And so, in, you know, going through this process um, with Adam, he's really, it's just really helped, mm -hmm. like you said, setting a goal and having an end in sight that you know yeah. of where you're heading. Otherwise, yeah. it's like, you know, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. Um, yep. And so yep. it's nice. And, you know, working together, we are not always the best ones to hold each other accountable um, because we also have to, you know, live together for yes. the, re the rest of the time. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's, it just has helped, you know, all around um, just having accountability yeah. that that's on paper. So it's yeah. like, does this align with what we want and, mm -hmm. and does it not? And if not, then we need to be okay with saying no. That's right. Yeah. No, I love, I mean, as a customer, I love your mentality because you're so focused on like quality and customer service and all that. Like it, I will give up everything as long as I know that this product is done right. And that's what I love about y'all, but I get it. Like if you're going to grow and build and be able to pass this business down and, and all that, like there's gotta be that plan. Yeah. So I, I totally get it. Uh, so I want to, I want to make sure that we're directing everybody um, that is, interested to learn more about pfx and what you guys offer share how how they can reach y'all whether it's you know phone number website resources out there to do some research yeah our um website has a pretty much any information that you it's need time. it's out there um it's www.pfxstormshelters.com mm -hmm. um we also have a facebook page that seems to be little easier for me to update with like install pictures and yeah. stuff than updating it on the website mm -hmm. um and that you can search pfx storm shelters like when you go into facebook mm -hmm. or it's facebook.com slash pfx storm shelters um so those would be the two main mm -hmm. avenues as far as like social media or a website that you could go to mm -hmm. um we have a an info email that i get quite a few emails through and that is info at pfx storm shelters um and or call yeah too. i mean we we spend a lot of time on the phone with our customers and are more than happy to do so we are both very intimate mm -hmm. with not only the design criteria but what all goes into building it because we see it from the bottom up yeah. all the way to the top every day and so we spend a lot of time on the phone just educating people mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, for lack of a better word, a lot of ignorance, just especially even us, when we built our first house, we didn't know if shelters were available. Mm. And so our, our first shelter was in our garage when we built our house because we didn't know it was available. Otherwise, we would have had it designed into the home, yep. kind of like how yours was on yep. the remodel where it's incorporated into your home yeah. instead of just being in your garage. But um, even the, the things such as the wind loads, and I can get – really deep into a lot of the science behind it mm -hmm. and really explain why they are the way they are. Sometimes Thomas says I talk too much when it comes to that kind of stuff, but I like educating people. I like yes. helping them out. So they have, it's not just a, why well, I feel like this is going to protect me. Yeah. I know it is. And I yep. can explain to you why it is. Yeah. No, that's great. So maybe just let's close with this. Talk, talk through, um, and y'all have one in your house, what, what it has done for your family, just from a security 
um, standpoint and just knowing that you have a place to go and and also maybe the type of person that's out there that needs to start thinking about this um you know points whether and what i love is it's everybody the answer is everybody these two <laughs> but but like like you said like hey this is a time to really start thinking about it or, or what what time makes sense so that it is as seamless as possible yeah definitely um ha having a shelter just like you said it, it's just the peace of mind it's like an insurance policy mm -hmm. you hope you never have to use it but if you need it you sure hope that you have one mm -hmm. um and so having one at the house even like if matt and i are not home i know that our kids are protected. Yeah. Like I know that they can go and they can get in something. I don't have to tell them. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell them where it's at. I don't have to tell them how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that they would survive a tornado if it came through and we weren't, whether we were there or not, yeah. they have that protection. Um, so it's, it's really important. Just that peace of mind, knowing that, and you don't have to have, have kids to want it. I mean, we've had so many different customers um in so many different walks of life mm -hmm. and it is you know they're all above ground nothing is below ground and so if you have a walker or you have a wheelchair or you have um you know pets or something it's not like you're trying to go downstairs into this underground cavern yeah. that's full of water and snakes yeah. and spiders and whatever else it might be so <laughs> yep. it fits i mean it fits for everyone we also we just i don't know about three weeks ago put one in for a couple um, and their son's in a wheelchair. So it has a, we have like an ADA door that is wheelchair accessible. And, you know, we had him roll in, you know, before we finished everything, just to make sure that, that yes, this is gonna be perfect for them. And it was. Um, awesome. So yeah, we actually just, went to their house and taped off in their dining room. They had a wood floor and actually mm -hmm. taped off on the floor, taped where the door was, the swing of the door and everything. So we could, Get him sure. in, yes, clear and it, make and sure then, before yeah. we came out that everything would work. But you know, some of the best times is during construction. Yeah, as far as from a financial aspect, when you're already building a home mm -hmm. and you got a mortgage, it's it's just like you know, adding AC or anything else. It has very little impact on your monthly mortgage payment mm -hmm. to be able to put that in right at the same time as you're building. Yeah, but at the same time. Um, you know, we can put them in at any time. Yeah. We can put them in on a, on a finished home. We can put them in at all phases of construction. Mm -hmm. um, the only homes that we cannot do are pier and beam homes. Yeah. Unless it has a special slab poured just for the shelter. Okay. Um, or like a modular home or, yep. or a uh, mobile home. Yeah. You have to have a foundation yes. to, to anchor into like yes. a what? Four inch minimum foundation. Yes, uh, yeah. four, or four inch minimum slab. Yeah. Typical residential slab construction doesn't have to be anything special, just yep. as long as it's standard residential construction. Yep. yep. Yeah. So again, if you didn't catch that, it's if you're designing a home, great time to incorporate it because then you can work with your builder, you can get everything, all the plans designed, and it's in and it's ready to go. Um, but the greatest thing, because they come in, like you said, six or twelve inch sections that literally you can assemble. So you can put it in your family room, you can put it in your garage, you can put it in your mm -hmm. closet. You can do whatever, any size. Like, Mitt, what's the smallest shelter that you have done? <laughs> a th three by three. Oh. And it was uh, a couple that we had done one for their son, I think, as well. But they had this nook in their garage. Yep. And it was unintentional, but it was a perfect size for this. Mm -hmm. So it was, for them, they were a small man and woman. They yeah. could get in it pretty easy, but it was a pretty small shelter. It's tight, yeah. But we can go as shallow as two feet deep. Now, we wouldn't go like as a, narrow as possible, too, yeah. with that depth. But yeah. we can tailor them. In and that's what's sizes. cool is it doesn't have to be a perfect square, correct? Can you can you shape it around, or does it need to be a square? It, it does have to be a square or okay. a rectangle. Or rectangle, so, okay. But we can't do inverted corners. Okay. And, and okay. that's kind of one of the things, like, moving forward with the business, too, as we start to grow is to design a lot of different stuff, too. Mm -hmm. We. We really want to grow our business to the point where we are the known safety company in the yeah. whole North Texas area. Yeah. And a lot of that's going to be kind of trying to encompass anything we can do for anybody. Yeah. yeah. I just love that it fit. It fits anywhere. You can customize it as, as you want. Like I wrap mine, the inside of it, you have little brackets. I wrapped, 
it with with you know pine tongue and groove and so it you know you can either keep the industrial steel look which i think looks awesome too or you can wrap it you can just you can make it whatever you want but but again i can't emphasize enough um just the impact as a as a as a father as a husband uh, I put a lot on myself to protect my family, you know, whether that be financially, physically, emotionally, whatever it is. And this is at the top of that list because there's nothing that will f make you feel more helpless than a tornado coming oh, your yeah. way. Yeah. So I just, I love what y'all are doing. And one, thank you for protecting my family. Um, and thank you for what you're doing, you know, in the North Texas, Oklahoma area. Um, and for those of y'all just keep on the lookout. It's, uh, it's on the delays on me. We've got a video, we've got an install video, um, when we'll have before and afters, uh, of the, my shelter, I'm almost done. I'm just finishing out a couple of things, but that'll be, uh, that'll be coming up soon. So keep an eye out for that. But again, check them out at their website on Facebook. Uh, give them a call. Like I said, that was how I first started. I looked at your website, did a bunch of research, watched the videos. And then, you know, we spoke and mm -hmm. y'all came out, looked at it. The, just the peace of mind that y'all gave us as we're going forward. It, it was a clear choice that we needed to use your shelter. And then you talk about the economics of it. It's like that I looked at a whole bunch of other models and this one still made the most sense. It really did because like what y'all have done from a manufacturing standpoint and keeping costs down. I mean, that's, it's a doable thing. I had someone come like ask me the other day. I was like, what was that like 50, 75 grand to put that in? It's like something like that. Something <laughs> like that. It's not guys. I promise yeah, you it wasn't, no, it wasn't, <laughs> but, uh, but thank y'all Matt and Tana. I appreciate y'all coming you. in and making the drive and, and everything that you've done and anything we can do to help. We're always here. Appreciate, well, we appreciate it. it. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you for having us on. And we really appreciate you having us into your home. I mean, it, I know we supplied your shelter, but it, it means more than us. And we love it when people, just really get that sense of peace out of them. And y'all gave that to us. So thank, thank you, you so much.